Welcome to episode number 131 of Broad Street Hustle. I'm your host tonight, Jason Sayeta. And tonight we will review the Eagles' uh, pretty resounding win over the Bengals last week. We'll preview the upcoming uh, Eagles-Jaguars game. And as always, we'll handicap the rest of the NFL for week nine, um, the upcoming games. We'll give out our three picks. And then we will handicap the pick five, uh, Delmar's pick five tomorrow, as we're taping this on Friday night, leading into the Breeders' Cup Classic. So it's our big Breeders' Cup uh, episode as well. So uh, before we get started, uh, tonight's episode is brought to you by Jivanina's Pizza. You've tried the rest. Now try the best, Jivanina's. So unfortunately, Tommy is sick and can't join us tonight. Um, Meeker is out on assignment at some Atlantic City watering hole, so he can't join us tonight. <laughs> but we do have Chalky White, uh, our usual co-host. Chalky, what's up? Is this a, like a legitimate establishment that Meeker's at, or is it just like is he, is he on the corner with a bottle of hooch? Somewhere in Margate or Atlantic City or okay. somewhere that serves alcohol. I'm okay. sure that's where Meeker is. All right. God bless so, him. So... Um, and we, we also have the legend. The legend is back. And what would a big horse racing episode be if the legend Jimmy D didn't join us? Jimmy D, what's going on? Hi, guys. It's always good to be back on the Broad Street Hustle. It's a pleasure, guys. It's nice. I, already the Breeders' Cup the year has just passed us by. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, after tonight, well, what's the next race? The... Uh, Pegasus, I guess, right? The yeah, next big uh, race day. So let's try to win some money. All right, let's get into it. We'll start with the Eagles Bengals game. Um, you know, the Eagles started kind of slow last week. Uh, Bengals jumped out to a 7 0 lead. Um, and then uh, the I think the Eagles kicked the field goal, and then the Bengals were, were going down and they stalled, and then they missed a long field goal before halftime. Um, we're now that the Bengals uh, did kick a field goal. So it was about 10, three, right. And then Bengals were driving again. They missed the field goal before halftime. The Eagles drive right down, the, right down and score to tie the game at halftime. Um, Zach Taylor goes for it on fourth down, um, which I think kind of turned the game around, but you know, the Eagles, they, they had a really good game on both sides of the ball. Um, they outgained the, the Bengals 397 to 280 yards. They were six for 11 on third down. Well, the Bengals were 10 for 13 on third down. So um, I guess that's a little concerning. But, um, you know, the big stat is I think it's three straight weeks now where Hertz hasn't turned the ball over. Um, the Bengals did have four turnovers, uh, three fumbles lost and, a, and an interception. And the Eagles had none. So uh, solid game for the Eagles. Uh, I'll throw it to you, Chalky. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I I don't think the Bengals are Super Bowl contenders like uh, Jason, you and I picked them at the beginning of the season. But I, I mean, I'll go on the record to say that this is, the, you know, certainly the best win of the year for the team. Uh, Green Bay might be the best team they've beat at this point. But um, both sides of the ball looked good for majority of the game, I'll say. Uh, that first that first drive from the Bengals was 10 minutes and it was, you know, uh, Burrow was like 10 for 10 or something, I think. So like you said, they, they were converting some third downs, but the defense avoided the big plays for the most part. So that meant you had to be perfect in just about every play if you're not going to get one big gash play. And so the defense did hold them for that. Um, the The fourth down was obviously sort of the closing part of the game. But to me, the, the, the first big play was... Uh, it was 10 three and you, you know, you mentioned Hertz did not turn the ball over, but he came damn close uh, on the third down screen to gain. Well, where uh, they read the Bengals, they Bengals read guy that. was half a second late. Yeah. And if he's a little faster, he picks that that's a pick six. It's a 17 yeah. to three game. And I don't think it's a stretch to say Eagles probably don't win that game. If it's 17 to three. Mm-hmm. Um, so they avoided disaster there. And then, uh, Cincinnati comes back, misses the field goal. Eagles have the short field and score the tie going into the half. Um, but, you know, overall to me, this is the closest Hertz has looked to the 22 version of him that we've seen uh, this year and maybe even last year. He ran the ball well. He he threw it, 
well enough, except for that one play. And part of that was they, this was, I mean, to me, this was the Kellen Moore offense that I thought we were going to get. They used a lot of motion and a lot of play action. And some of these guys were wide open and that's fine. And he made those throws. Um, but he did make a couple throws across the middle. He had a late third down play to Smith on a slant across the middle. That was good. He hit AJ Brown on that third and 16 and he threw the touchdown uh, to Smith. Um, so they weren't all easy, um, but the offensive line held up well yeah. with the injuries. And like I said, give the D credit, you know, the Bengals moved the ball, but they stopped them when they had to. Dejean looks like he could be a player. It's only a couple games in, but he tackles. It, it, it's rare to see a guy in the backfield that actually makes the tackle. Uh, he tackled Chase. He tackled some of the other guys. He brings them down. So um, last two games, I wasn't really expecting much to build on because of the competition. The Bengals were a step up. So this is uh, I, I don't have them in the Super Bowl contender category yet, the Eagles, but this is definitely a, a nice step forward. And uh, I'm more optimistic than I have been certainly coming out of this game as, as prior weeks. Yeah. And one thing I failed to mention was the offensive line was very good, you know, which is surprising because, you know, without your left tackle, uh, that Johnson stepped right in and, and did a pretty good job. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So how about you, Jimmy? Dave, what'd you think? You know, we're in the ninth week of the season. I'll, I'll tell you what, the team looks like it's coming along. I, I, I agree. A lot of the things that uh, Chalky said showing improvement, offensive line, defensive line, you know, Kellen Moore and Vic Fangio, they're, they're both you know, grouped together this year. They needed a few games to come together. You got to give them a little space. And they did what they had to do against Cincinnati. I'm impressed. If you would have talked to me two weeks ago, I would have been sort of like a Debbie Downer, but not now. Um, you know, I see a, a little bit of, of light at the end of that tunnel. Moore's offense is running. They can score. Um, you, you know, I, I'm not a shout out to our sick host. I, I sort of agree with them. I'm not a big Jalen Hurts guy. I don't think he's a check down guy. I don't think he can read defense as well. He's a fabulous athlete. He's strong as an ox. That's why that nonsensical push push works all the time because his legs, he can press 400, 500 pounds. I mean, the guy's a, he's, yeah. he's a bull. But uh, in terms of just a, a savvy quarterback, I don't know. Um, I mean, he's got the weapons, though. He, he's, he's got the weapons. And, and, I, and I think you know, the, even the way they're using Barkley lately, you know, they left off him. They laid off him a little bit. I like that. I, I don't think he's a 25 carry back kind of guy. Uh, not coming off those injuries. So, you know, I'm feeling good about where they are midway through the season. Uh, I got to be honest. And, you know, we got Jacksonville on the horizon. You know, that should be a W, but I don't want to get ahead of myself. But, yeah, all good. Yeah. Yeah, and speaking of that, I mean, I guess we could jump right into the, into that game. Uh, I'll quickly give you my thoughts. I mean, to me, this just looks like a mismatch. I think the Jacks, I think the Jaguars are just undisciplined. They're poorly coached. I mean, Doug Peterson's on his last legs there. He's he's going to go. Isn't that unbelievable, uh, Jada. We got to say that they're poorly coached with a guy. That they're that poorly coached. Won a Super Bowl. I mean, it's unbelievable. But you're right. I think you're you right. Got, you got guys jumping off sides and you know uh, on fourth down and giving them first downs. You got false starts that are taking you back out of field goal position. It's they're just poorly coached, undisciplined. Um, they have injured wide receivers coming into this game, although I think I think Thomas is going to play, but he's a little banged up. But they traded their left tackle. So they're, they're basically giving up on the season. Um, the defense is god-awful. And this is a defense where, and I'm not a Hurts fan either, but because against zone, I, I think he has big issues against zone, but this is a, a defense that plays man uh, he's good against man, and I think they're, you know, to me, this is this is a game where where the offense is going to exploit Jacksonville's defense. <laughs> Trevor Lawrence, to me, is I don't know, he's a he's a big disappointment. Um, but I'll leave it I'll leave it to you guys to to run through your thoughts, and then I'll give you my final score at the end. But uh, Chalky, what do you think? So, uh, well, I'll go to one of my points since you just touched on it. So. Uh, Hertz right now, I mentioned, yeah, we were used, they used a lot of play action. So uh, Hertz is the number one rated quarterback using play action in the league. And Jacksonville is the 31st best defense against play action. So yeah. I would expect to see a lot of the same uh, trying to exploit that. 
Um, look, I mean, you know, could it be a trap game? Maybe. They got Dallas next week. We all know that whoever's playing Dallas the following week looks ahead uh, for the game prior. Um, that was a scintillating con- uh, uh, conversation we had with uh, a, 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 a member of the show, which will remain nameless. But. Yeah, so um, so they, they could get caught in that, obviously. Uh, but uh, Jags have been up and down all year. Now, they... I think they, they, they've been more, way more down than way more down. But look, I mean, I know uh, love got hurt last week, but they were tied. The green Bay needed a late field goal to beat them last week. Right. Um, and the left tackle, they did try to left tackle, but I think he had missed the last two games. So they had played okay without him, but the D is finding their rhythm. So I, I'm, I'm optim- I'm pretty confident that they're not going to let 35 get put up on them. Um, I'll just say, the line is sitting at seven and a half right now. I'm still a little hesitant to take the Eagles by more than a touchdown against anybody. So I'm going to say the Eagles win and it'll be 24, 17, either a late touchdown or a uh, Eagles turnover that leads to an easy Jacksonville touchdown. We'll make it a one score game in the end somewhere along the line, but I got 24, 17 Eagles. So you have backdoor backdoor cover by Jacksonville. I don't know if it'll be, yeah, it might be backdoor either, either like a field goal to make it a one score game and then try an onside kick kind of thing. But I think it'll be closer because the Eagles will turn it over, which will lead to points at some point for Jacksonville. Jimmy D, we got traditionally these kind of games going kind of piggybacking the Chalky's point. These kind of games, you know, Jacksonville will be winning 14 to three at half. And everybody will be saying, well, what the hell just happened? What are they doing today? They're laying down, so on and so forth. And then they kind of catch their momentum in the second half. And unfortunately, don't cover a spread. That That's the unfortunate end. But let me pose a question. You guys are pretty analytical. Here. Why? What happened to Jacksonville? Doug Peterson is a quarterback coach. He has been known to do that, established with Hall of Fame quarterbacks. He gets Trevor Lawrence. Yep. He, he, he drafts three offensive linemen over the course of the last few years. And that team is yep. going nowhere. What is going on? Um, so I gave Trevor Lawrence a lot of leeway because Urban Meyer was his coach in, in his rookie year. And that was, as we know, an absolute disaster. So I was willing to give him some leeway. You know, Peterson came on. I think he improved a little bit in his second year, Lawrence. Uh, but he just hasn't taken a step forward. I don't know if he's stupid, if he's dumb. Like, I don't know what it is because he's got the talent. He's got the arm. You know, he's got all kinds of athletic ability. He's, he's you know, he could he could run to get you a first down. Uh, like I said, he's got a big arm. I don't know what his issue is. He just never – he just never became what he should be. I don't know if it's him, if it's Peterson. I just know that – you know, I mentioned it before. I just think this team is undisciplined. And you point to the coach when, when, when a team is undisciplined. So – I don't know. I mean, Peterson seemed to be fine here. Was it his coordinators that carried him here? You know, that could be. Um, but something something's not right there, and I don't know who to blame, but uh, you know who's going to get the blame because you can't fire all the no players. Question. So, Yeah, I, I mean, Lawrence was one of the better – college quarterbacks we've seen in recent history i mean he you know he uh won the national title as a freshman he made the playoffs all three years he was there with clemson made it back to the you know lost the title game his second year um six six two twenty so he's got the 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 height the the size that you want to you know ideally have and like from a raw statistics perspective i mean he's 11 touchdowns four interceptions so far not not bad numbers at all but He's been wildly inconsistent. And I mean, to me, um, going towards what you had said, Jim, I I don't want to make excuses for him because I think he's made some pretty dumb plays, but he also hasn't had uh, enough for consistency on the uh, that side of the ball. I mean, they've drafted linemen, but they haven't drafted any good linemen <laughs> that have really excelled. Um, he hasn't had any real uh consistency as far as a good wide receiver year over year you know they've cycled guys through there Ridley was all right last year he went as a free agent the kid they drafted from LSU seems like he could be a player but he's a rookie 
Um, and then you have a guy um, like ATN who's been in and out of the lineup. So he st- I, th- I think ATN stinks though. I- I'm not a yeah. fan at all of ATN. Uh, so, so there's been a lack of consistency for me other than Lawrence on the offensive side of the ball. And then the defense, you know, defense hasn't been anything to talk about. So it's been on him and he's, He's been in situations where he's made mistakes, and uh, I'm trying to look it up now. I want to say he fumbles a lot, but maybe I'm just oh Lawrence, that. Lawrence absolutely, yeah. Fumbles. yeah. Sure, yeah. So that's the thing too. So whether interceptions or, or fumbles, you're turning the ball over. So and that's I mean, Peterson Peterson is probably regarded you know more highly of a coach than he actually is for what he did here. Yeah, you know, but um, it, yeah, Lawrence has been a disappointment for sure. And he just got a big contract, so he's going to be there for a few more years, for sure. He was he was a guy, and I don't know what you guys think of this. Um, that I thought, because again, I am not a Hertz fan. Do you take a chance on Lawrence with some kind of Hertz for Lawrence trade? Now I don't know how that works contractually, um, but you know, two two quarterbacks that. And again, I'm just projecting what I think is going to wind up happening, which is the Eagles aren't going to go anywhere with Hurts. But like, you know, is that a move that you guys would 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 make to take a chance on Lawrence? I personally would, because I think he's a better passer. It's a passing league. I'd rather have a passer. Jay, I, my just, question, just to my, jump in, I, I mean, I, I I would like to have a passer too. That can hit check down receivers and go one, two, three, four around the field. But you know, the Eagles run a lot of their offense around these RPOs. And and you know, what good is Lawrence going to be in that situation? Um, you know, that's a hurt strong point. If anything, you know, he's done that well all along. But um, you know, can we get this guy to throw balls down the field? Chucky, he, he's right. He was stellar at Clemson. I mean, the guy was the next best thing. Oh, I thought coming oh, out, I thought he was going to be a generation. He's got the size, yeah. like he's six foot six. I mean, this guy's he's got everything, every attribute that you should have. And all of a sudden, and I think what they made the playoffs a couple of years ago, didn't they? And 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 now I think they did. Yeah, I think yeah, they, they had that crazy comeback yeah, against exactly. uh, LA. Yeah, San Diego, right? The Chargers. Was it against the Chargers? Yeah. Well, they're 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 in uh, L.A. now, uh, De La Rocca, but, but they were San Diego. No, they yeah. weren't. No, they weren't. <laughs> oh, is that right? All right. Yeah. Then you call me De La Rocca. Then. Right. I'm sorry. I would have so said that, that was that was that was the one time he was on. He was on before that game, and he kept oh, saying, he? "Okay, Diego, all right." right. <laughs> um, yeah. I, right now, I, so to me, it's not as much of a question to, to answer the question about Hertz for Lawrence. My question is, who's the coach for, for the mm. Eagles? Because if it's Sirianni, I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, now if you're going to clean house and bring somebody else in after this year, let's say, and you're saying Hurts for Lawrence, that's a different conversation. Um, I think if you're going to trade Hurts, the easiest way is to do a deal like a Stafford Goff deal, where guys are on have bigger contracts and you're exchanging them like that. I would not make that move right now, only because I just I haven't seen you could Hurts Warts and all has gotten team to the Super Bowl. Lawrence hasn't done that. So I don't know that you're getting any better. Now, who would you trade Hertz for? We go through all the guys that we think are better than Hertz. But to me, it's not Lawrence unless there's other stuff coming. Like if they want to give us Lawrence and a first and a second for Hertz, if we want to get off of Hertz, sure, I'll definitely consider that. But as a straight up one for one, sure. Lawrence, is, Lawrence isn't the guy I'm going to go for unless I, unless they're bringing somebody else in. Yeah to coach that I would feel is going to really bring the yeah. best out of him. So could you, so could you like compare a Lawrence to where, you know, Goff wasn't working out with the Rams, right? Here's another guy. He went to the Super Bowl, but then he kind of like fell. So uh, what Goff I'll say is he got the Super Bowl and he had a couple really, really good regular seasons under McVay. Lawrence's best regular season has, was all right, but it wasn't great. Now, look, he hasn't had the weapon. So you could say, look, well, if he comes here and he's got A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Saquon Barkley in that line, anybody's going to look good. All right, maybe. Um, So to me, Goff, at the time of that trade, even though he had come down a little bit, had shown more at at least, you know, had a couple playoff runs to where I would have been like, okay, like that would have been, I would have, you're saying Goff in in, uh, 21 versus Lawrence now, I would trade Hurts for Goff before I would trade him for Lawrence at this point. Um, 
I still think there's talent there, but I so also don't know how screwed how screwed up in the head he is at this could, point. Can you undo you mold that? Him? Could you mold him into a quarterback? Could Kyle I don't know. I don't. I don't. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. I, yeah, that's that's the risk you're taking because you don't. You're hoping you're going to get something that he hasn't shown yet. Whereas if it's hurts, it's you know what you have, and it's not going to be enough. I don't know if he's. I don't know if you're going to get his head right because I think part of it is either being stupid or something psychological, and and maybe you can't undo that. There, there's guys, you know, you go back to your Jeff Georges, guys that have all the talent in the world, have big arms, and they just yeah. – Jeff George, I think, was dumb. I think that was his, his issue. He was just a bad quarterback. But uh, maybe Lawrence, you know, maybe Lawrence is that. I would still – if it's me, I would take that shot because I know what I have in Hurts, and I don't think it's good enough. I don't know – what Lawrence is yet. I know that there's talent somewhere in there. I just don't know if you could get it out of them. So, yeah, you know, what I, I mean, you know it seems to me it's if you are a pocket passer, uh, you're traditional, like like your Trevor Lawrence, and 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 like you say, the Jeff George was in the past, and so on and so forth. We had a lot of great white hopes that came out of college with rifle arms, big quarterbacks that never panned out. You know, mm-hmm. football has morphed into Todd a Todd it. <laughs> Riley, but they, they've morphed into a different game. And, you know, the game is you, you've got to be a maneuverable type of quarterback, throw on the run, move the pocket. You know, the, the linemen are so fast nowadays that it's hard to contain them. So you've got to have flexibility. You've got to move. Um, and I was never a fan of that running quarterback, that that prototypical no. Michael Vick type of quarterback. That, that's a fleeting thing. They, they're they good one year, and then the next year something happens. So, you know, they get figured they out. Figure they out. get figured out. Or they'll nick yeah. themselves. It can't. Somehow. It can't. It can't be your only. It can't be your yeah, only thing. Yeah. You know. But but to be a, a, a great pocket passer, you know, uh, you know that traditional. I guess it's a Brady type passer. You really have to be an elite quarterback nowadays. You you got to be quick reader. You got to be a quick learner. A fast release. Quick feet. Quick in a pocket. Three and a half seconds. That's it. You better get rid of the ball. And you know. Rodgers at his best can still do it. Um, not many people can perform that. And, and, you know, they need they need to buy the time with their feet. Some guys can't do that. And, and, and unfortunately, guys like Hertz, he's got it with his feet, but his arm leaves a lot to be desired. So, you know, I, I'm not sure what the right formula is for football 2024. But, but even Rodgers at his best, you meant, you know, he could stand in the pocket, but if you go back on his highlight reel, a lot of those plays where he was able to avoid traffic in the pocket, jump out, buy some time, and hit a guy moving down. So you can't be you can't be a statue in the pocket. No, you gotta have you gotta have. Quick um, so yeah. it, it, run first quarterback, you know, is still going to have your issues down the line. Um, but I think it's sort of molded into you know what you look at the top guys now. Mahomes is not a run first quarterback, but he can right. go. Josh Allen is not a run first quarterback, but he can go. Um, most of your top guys have that dynamic to them, you know, but you go back, you know, Elway, Young, those kind of types, as opposed to, uh, you know, Montana, who couldn't run. Chuck, where do you put, where do you um, put Lamar Jackson in that category? I think he, he, I mean, I'll let Chalky answer, but I, uh, I, I, I think there's, he's not run first, but there's too many design run plays that to, for me to think he's a, He's obviously had all the regular season success in the world, but I think his playoff record speaks for itself. Mm-hmm. So um, he's not a quote unquote running quarterback to me, but a lot of that offense is predicated on the chance that he might tuck it and run intentionally more so than throw it uh, or even hand it off. But they have Henry now, so it's a little different this year. So he's not a running quarterback, but I think he probably try He runs it. There's too many design run plays for him that, when the defense focuses on that and takes that away, it causes other issues. Even though I still think he's a good quarterback, no matter what, um, he hasn't proven in the playoffs that he can j- throw the ball on most downs and get his team to to wins in the big games. To me, he's a he's a he's a run a one read run run first quarterback. To me, um, and I think the issues that you have in the playoffs are. Um, uh, horse just got loose. I don't know if you're watching chalk. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm waiting to see if they're what what the deal with this is going to be. I don't know 12. what that is, but um, 
to me, what happens in the playoffs is, um, you know, if they fall behind and he's got to come back, the reason he's, you know, I have this argument so many, with so many people about him. And they say, oh, well, he's become a better passer. The reason he could pass is because you have to respect his run, right? Sure. So now you have to have a spy. You have to take somebody out of coverage. When you're late in the game and the other team doesn't care if you run, right, and you're down two scores late in the fourth quarter and they're, you know, they have everybody back in coverage and they say, all right, you want to take off and run eight yards? I don't care, right? That's when he runs into issues. And that's what happens. And then, you know, in the playoffs, you're playing against a good defense. You're not playing these these Mickey Mouse teams that you play during the season, right? And that's my whole issue with Lamar Jackson. I think he's good. Don't get me wrong. I just don't – I think when it – you know, like Chalky said, his his playoff record speaks for itself. Jay, they, they sort of catch up to him. Like another thing that's been alluded to here. Um, mm-hmm. it, you know, I, I don't – Lamar, he's, he's a situation where he wins all year long and he gets to the playoffs and he loses. You know, he, he, that running quarterback can freeze the linebackers, which is good because you got one-on-one coverage on the outside. You're not going to double with the safeties because you have no linebackers dropping back because they're, they're, they're king, the quarterback, the running quarterback, or like you said earlier, spying him. But without that, you know, you got to be a, 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 a precise passer going back to that Lawrence conversation. And, and, you know, mm-hmm. there, there's not a lot of them around right now. You know, uh, I, I guess the hottest flavor of the week is Jalen Daniels, uh, which is another I, – I don't know if he's a run first quarterback, but because of his potential to run, he certainly has, you know, opened up a lot of his passing game and has made those receivers that much better. And all of a sudden, Washington is a real deal in the East. But, um, yeah, it doesn't seem to, to play out in the playoffs in the bigger game. It always catches up with them. Amazing. Yep. Yep. And by the way, my prediction is the Eagles will win 30-17 this week. So I do have them covering. Hmm. So. I don't know if they're seven and a half points better than anybody. Um, I, I'm not sure about that. Like I said, in games like this, they sit down and I, I think I, I, I would, would, would have Jacksonville covering in the game. But uh, I certainly wouldn't want to bet this game first and foremost. So, Chalky, your your feed is way ahead of mine, and I see you pumping your fist. So, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm guessing got a winner. Won. I'm happy for him. I'm guessing you won. Uh, with, uh, yeah, I, I'm watching the track feed. So he actually went off the favorite, but he's not the favorite in any of the betting. The 13 Henri Matisse. I see him flying down the street. Aiden O'Brien flies home to win, and uh, nice. Nice pick, nice turf pick three, nice pick four, but nice. uh, I lost a uh, $4,600 pick five that I declined to play. Oh, wow. Actually, we're out. So it was just an interesting, not to get too far ahead. So the pick, the all turf pick three, the pick four, and the pick five all had different favorites in this race. That's and interesting. The, thir- the, the 13 was actually the favorite in the pick five, but he was third choice in the pick three. And, okay. and, and so, Chuck, if I may, because I'm, I'm usually the guest with horse racing. If I may, for the thousands that watch this particular broadcast, and I know our, our viewership has increased every week, that's the difference, Chalk. You see how excited you got with that race? I'm not so sure you're going to be that excited if the Eagles beat Jacksonville. That's the difference. Uh, no, that's. The difference. I won't have. Any, I, I won't have any money on the game. So no, no, that's. <laughs> That's we'll talk people expected. that all the time. This horse racing is the best uh, betting yeah, sport. You, well, you know me, honestly, God, I agree. There's, there's not even a close second. Although I do like betting golf, but uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's there's it's not even. It's a really, but, yeah, it's 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 the catchphrase for the Derby. It's the greatest two minutes in sports. It absolutely is. Well, speaking of betting, let's get into some betting stats. Uh, we'll, we'll get into uh, how we did last week, and we'll get some picks for this week. So we'll just get into league stats first. So over, under, there were 11 overs and five unders last week. Um, so over is now 62 and 58 on the year. So over has, has overtaken the under. So I think Vegas is going to start inflating lines. You might, might get some unders coming in at some point soon. 
The public was 10 and 6 again. They're 32 and 13 in the last three weeks. So the public is now favorable on the year, 61 and 59. So let's get to our bets from last week. Um, I'll start with me. I was 2 and 1. Um, I won my best bet with the Browns. Um, they covered the 8. They actually won outright. Um, I won with the Jaguars by the skin of my teeth. They covered the plus four, but I did lose the Dolphins. Uh, we'll go to Chalky next. Chalky was one and two. He lost his under in the Cowboys 49ers game. He did win the under in the Colts Texans, but he lost with the Bengals. I got very lucky in the Colts Texans game because that scoop and score didn't count, right? Well, not only that it didn't count, it was that. Uh, Texans couldn't run the clock out, so they would have had to kick a field goal, which would have pushed it, I think, That's at true. the worst. And I got unlucky with the Cowboys game. I went to bed at halftime. I was like, oh, this will be good. And then Dallas scored 14 yeah. garbage points in the fourth quarter to push it over. You, you want to push because you have 45 and a half. You would have lost. I would have lost then. You would have lost. Then, yeah, so. Um, Tommy went one and two. He lost his best bet with the Dolphins. He lost with the Titans, but he did have the Browns. Um, and then Meeker went one and two. He lost the over in the Bill Seahawks game. He did have, he won with his Joe Public Falcons pick. Um, and, but then he lost the under in the Eagles Bengals game. So let's get to some stats now. Um, so on the year, Chalky is 14 and nine. He has a profit of $400, 61% win percentage, 17% ROI. I'm 12 and 11, loss of $14, 52% win percentage, minus 1% ROI, negative 1%. Meeker's 10 and 13, loss of $406, 43% win, negative 18% ROI. Tommy's 9 and 15, loss of $682, 38% win, minus 28% ROI. Um, and let's get to our overall record. Um, I am 75 and 53 over the three years that we've done the podcast, $1,495 profit, 59% win, 12% ROI. Tommy's now even 62 and 62 loss of $335, 50% win, negative 3% ROI. Chalky 63 and 66 loss of $798, 49% win, negative 6% ROI. Meeker. 60 and 65, loss of $1,091, 48% win, negative 9% ROI. And the podcast has now slipped below 500. No, not below 500, but below, we're at a loss. We are 260 and 246, loss of $729, 51% win, negative 1.4% ROI. So, Jimmy D, we're going to need your help this week. We're going to need at least one winner from you to kind of pull us out of the pull us out of the red. No doubt, Jay. That that no problem at all. Of course, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, I'd be a fool to make a pick on this particular podcast because a few years ago, I think I went three and zero on a on an ask, and uh, I was never asked again, which I should never play again. Uh, but however, if I God help me go six and zero, oh, you're never going to hear the end of it. But um, let's have it. We got. I like a couple dogs, and I like a couple dogs on Sunday. Um, I know this podcast don't deal with college football, so I won't give you Penn State, and that's a given. Let me tell you something: they're going to crush Ohio State. But forget about that. That's just that's a freebie. You got a free square with that. I like Cleveland. I'll tell you why. I don't like mediocre teams traveling across the country. And Cleveland's playing a home game with a quarterback that had a decent game last week. They're going to be fired up. I think they can. Uh, I think the points, uh, getting points at home there, will be a quality play with the Cleveland Browns on on um, Sunday. Uh, a second game that I like, I'll give you three games. A second game I like is a an interconference game. They're always tough the interconference games, as you know. Give me the points at home in an interconference game. That's never a bad play. That percentage always holds up at a, at a quality rate throughout the course of the year. So I like Green Bay, and I like Green Bay plus the points. Uh, and, the, and the third and final game that I'll give you 
is 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 the magic of the fabulous Joe Flacco. Um, you know, it's sort of like watching the replacements, where it was Falco, if you remember that, for the guys who watched the replacements. But this is Flacco, and it's almost the same thing because he's a washed up guy who is just taking care of himself on the boat, chilling out, asked to come back and play three or four different times. And each time he's been representative, each time he's been, you know, okay. Uh, you're giving them guys a touchdown. Minnesota's coming off, of, you know, a, a down week. They're coming back to life a little bit. I like the other dog. I like I like Indianapolis. My, my plays would be three dogs, Cleveland, Green Bay, and the Colts. Well, I have good and bad news for you, Jimmy D. I agree with you on one, and I'm totally against you on another one. We'll we'll get to my picks a little later. I do have Meeker's picks, but I'm going to hold them off. We'll go to Chalky next, and then I'll I'll, I'll give you Meeker's picks. Yes, thank you. Um, So I'm going to go back to a, uh, you know, I've caught flack for just taking totals, but uh, I was going three for three often in weeks I took only totals. So we'll go back to that. But just one thing I to go along with what you mentioned earlier, uh, Jay, I saw a tweet today, just got off the phone with a bookmaker in Las Vegas. Uh, this quote is something. October 2024 was the worst month for the house I can ever remember. Yep. NFL and college football favorites galore. So uh, yeah, it's a totally the last three weeks have been total public. Yeah, I would yeah. like to credit that 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 trend for why the pod has not done so well over the last few weeks. You're but, right. Uh, I mean, even Meeker's not really bringing us up that much anyway. But all right, so uh, I'm going with three totals this week, all unders. We'll start with best bet, uh, which is a, a a game that I think we'll all have in one way or another. Uh, I have under 42 and a half minus 112 in the uh, aforementioned Chargers Browns game. Um. My second pick is going to be under 38 in the Patriots Titans game. That is also minus 112. And then I'm going under 44 in the Washington New York football Giants game. Uh, That is minus 108. Did you happen to have Jimmy D's um, juice? Uh, Washington and Giants was under 44, you said? uh, Under 44, 108. So the Browns plus one is minus 108. Uh, the Packers plus three is minus 118 and the Colts plus five is minus 110. Okay. And what was the Patriots and Titans under 38? Minus 112. Minus 112. Okay. So Meeker's pick. So Meeker has the over in the Bears Cardinals game. So over 44 and a half. I almost went under (laughs) there, but minus 110. Yes. Um, he has the Rams minus one, minus one oh eight. Where is that game at? Uh, yeah, we'll we'll say that's right, but I gotta find it. <laughs> okay. And then he has the Bucks plus nine minus one oh eight. All right, so Rams minus one is up to minus one twelve. Minus one twelve, okay. And the Bucks plus nine is one oh eight. One oh eight, okay. Um I do not have Tommy's picks. Um but my pick, so Jimmy D, my best bet this week is the Chargers, uh, plus uh, minus one, minus one twelve, I believe. Chalky, right? Yes. Yeah. So the Chargers, they have the best defense in the league. They're 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 the number one defense uh, points per play, yards per point. <clears throat> I listen. I know Jameis Winston came in, stepped in, and had a good game last week, and he's a much better quarterback than Deshaun Watson. I, I don't trust them to do it back to back. They had a, a, a big emotional uh, divisional win last week against Baltimore. Uh, they have a lot of defensive injuries. Uh, Denzel Ward's out. Um, I think another guy in the secondary is out. So I, I, I like the Chargers this year. I think they're a pretty good team. Uh, I always liked Herbert. You know, I think Harbaugh is a good coach and they have a good defense. So. That's my best bet. Um, I do agree with you on the Colts. I have the Colts plus five, um, minus 110 as my second pick. Uh, same thing. Joe Flacco is a much, a much better quarterback than Anthony Richardson. That nonsense that he pulled last week, pulling himself out of the game. Are you kidding me? Did you see ridiculous. that? He was ridiculous. Tired. He was tired. Absolutely and ridiculous. He tapped his, his would have never done that. Would have to, I would have had to go to the hospital. I would have called him. I would have told him, yeah, keep walking. Go back to the locker room. Get the hell out of here. Yep. 
And then uh, my third pick is going to be opposite Meeker's Rams pick. I like the Seahawks plus one, and I think that's minus one twelve. Uh, that well, they flipped, so that's now that's minus one oh eight. Oh, so that's minus one oh eight. Okay. Yes. Better for me. Um, all right. So so that's it for the NFL. So now I'm going to throw it to Chalky, and we're going to give everybody some Breeders' Cup winners. All right. Thank you, Jason. So tomorrow is the second day of the Breeders' Cup World Thoroughbred Championship from where the surf meets the turf at Old Del Mar, just outside San Diego. Third time Del Mar has hosted. Uh, they'll be back there again next year before likely Belmont in 26, but we'll see if that actually goes through or not. Uh, we're going to cover the early all Breeders' Cup pick five, which begins with race four, which is the first Breeders' Cup race on the day. And we'll end with race eight, which is the Breeders' Cup Classic. Uh, once again, not the ending get out race of the day because NBC gets much more viewers for whatever college football game they'll have on the evening. So the rest of the card will get kicked to Peacock sure. after that, I believe. Um but we'll cover races four through eight for you. Uh, interesting betting sequence, some races that are open, some races where you could take a stand. Let's see where the experts are going to go with this. We'll kick it off with race four, uh, which is the PNC Bank Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Sprint. Seven furlongs on the dirt. Uh, this is one of the races where someone could take a stand, perhaps, if they wanted. So let's see what everybody's got to say. Jason, we'll start with you. Where are you going in the Philly and Mare Sprint? So I might wind up looking stupid here, but I'm trying to beat society. Um, I don't know. I thought I thought there's a couple of horses in here that 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 actually might uh, press her. I thought maybe the three or the one or even the ten with with Smith on on Celia. Um, so I'm going to use the nine ways and means as my top pick. I mean, I, I just think she was always meant to be a, a one turn horse. Um, she should sit behind the speed here and she should get a good trip. Um, she is versatile if for some reason there isn't speed, but I don't see how there couldn't be speed with society in the race, but um, she'll be my top pick. But I, my other horse is I'm, I'm going back to the four Vava. I, I think, I think she's got a shot here. Um, I didn't like her last race. Um, she kind of was a little dull in that race, I thought, but you know, I'm willing to give her another chance here. Um, She's another horse that could kind of work out a nice trip here. She's got eye ride. She's going to be coming, I think. So I'm just going to go too deep here. I'm going to try and get out of this race. I don't like this race. I'm not very confident in it, but I'm not willing to spread in it either. I'm just, you know, I'm going to I'm going to take a shot with, with four and nine and, and hopefully get through it. All right. Two horses there for Jason, Jimmy D. Who are you on in this race? Chuck, I'm going to stay with a horse that I gave you way back when I was in Saratoga in the summertime. I like Bulba, too. Uh, I know Jason mentioned my pick is the second pick. But I like the horse. Last last time when I had her in the Bell Arena, I, I mentioned to everybody that listens to this broadcast that Sherry DeVoe loves this horse. She does. She says it's the best horse in her barn. Um, during the Bell Arena on that day on the 24th of, of August, she was washed out. It was a hot day. She didn't look right from the beginning. I, I, I saw her coming onto the track. Um, she just didn't look right to me. Uh, not, not that I'm, you know, Joe Horse Whisperer, but on the other hand, I can see when a horse is sort of struggling a little bit, ears are back, wasn't comfortable, washed out in the middle. Um, it just wasn't right. Uh, it, it got third and lost to society. And, and like Jason, I'm trying to beat society. I think Baba could beat this horse. Um, her best... Um, Buyer was two off the layoff, and now we're coming. We're coming to a similar situation where you know she, she's running off a layoff. I I think this horse could can, can surprise a lot of people. Um, society is 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 you know that, that's going to be the chalk in the race, a difficult beat, and of course Brown's ways and means. He discovered that horse. That horse came to life in the summertime. Pratt sat on that horse and was a different horse. Any one of those three horses can win that race. I agree with Jason. I wouldn't want to be, this wouldn't be the race that I, I want to put my house on or my future on. Um, however, I, I'm going to give you a Bobby as a top pick. When, when we get into putting some um, pick fives together, I may spread a little bit, but I'll give you a Bobby for this race, race four, Breeders' Cup Day on Saturday. All right. And I'm going to try to beat a horse too, but uh, 
a little bit of a different outlook. So I'm going to try and beat Ways and Means because she's the morning line favorite, and I think she's going to be the betting favorite. Um, so she is not on my ticket. I'm going to spread a little bit. My top pick is going to be the four Bava. Um, she was very consistent, and you know her last race was a little bit of a step back, but that number on the thoroughgraph is was still a better number than. You know, nobody consistently is running. You know, there's horses that have run zeros, but they're not running them every race. It's it's off and on. Um, she's been she was throwing consistent ones, and then she threw a two on that race. But I'm going to say she obviously likes the seven panels. Hasn't been off the board in any of those races. Irad stays on board. Um, that'll be my top pick. I will use society of the two uh, to two favorites uh, if you want to look at it that way. Um, and then I am going to use two more horses here. Uh, so I'm going to use the seven Zytlos. Zytlos? Not sure how you say that. Um, that's Asmussen with uh, the other Ortiz aboard, Jose. Um, horses last couple times out, you know, wasn't running in grade one company. But when you look at her thoroughgraphs, ran a five to a four to a one. If there's a progression there, that prog- moving forward could put her right there with anybody else here. Um, and then I'm going back. I will use Skilla. So I'm, I'm taking all three out of that ballerina race. Um, again, just looking at progressions here. Uh, four to a two to a two to a two to a one. So the horse has been getting better. Mott spots these horses as well. A progression from the one could put her right there. And, you know, ways and means to start a couple of big races up there. But uh, I'm taking a stand against her here um, by spreading a little bit. All right. That takes us to race five, which is the... Prevagen, Prevagen, whatever, Prevagen, Breeders' Cup, Turf, Sprint, five furlongs on the turf course. It, uh, favorite here, a lot of people are going to like, but this crew may not. But Jimmy D, start us off. Who do you like here in the Joey, turf I'll tell sprint? you, I would love to bet against that horse, that favorite in this race. I, and I try. I, I really try. I, I looked all over the place try, trying to bet against this horse. Because I, I tell the, the people that listen to this broadcast – we're looking for value, at least I am, and and we're only picking four, five, six, seven, and eight leading up to the Breeders' Cup Classic. There's a lot of value in these in these classic races, in these Breeders' Cup races. In this particular sequence, I'm not so sure how much value exists. Codborn is a monster. It's going to be very difficult. He's going to run right on the pace. Uh, a precocious three, or uh, you know, it, it just just uh, this this course is. Just a precocious horse doesn't want to lose. Um, you know, I ride jumps back on him. Uh, Asmussen wins this, this race uh, in Saratoga with the Jiper. He wasn't winning anything. He wins this race. He gets 114 buyer, 114 at Saratoga in deep turf in in, in the middle. You know, in, in, in the middle of the summer. That that was in June where he did that. Um, I don't think Cogborn could be beat. He's my number one choice. Though I'd like to pick against them, I cannot do that. Um, secondly, I'd go to a European. Europeans don't win this race. Just remember that. Uh, grass races, they win. Of course, they, they dominate. But not in this sprint. Not in the five furlong sprint. They're one for 16. So I wouldn't go too crazy. But I'm going to give you a, a European for second. I'm going to give you Ryan Moore in believing um, the one horse. I wouldn't go too deep in this race either. I think Cogborn. It's his to lose. Um, this turf sprint's all his. All right. Uh, I'll go next. Uh, Cogburn, single, move on. <laughs> Jason? Yeah, I mean, the nine Cogburn is the most likely winner on a day for me. I mean, he's versatile. He's in form. He's faster than these horses. He has IRAD. He's my single here. But I do I do really like three horses underneath and and – the first one I have is the number one believing. You know, he's a Euro turf sprinter. Who he's now? The, the reason I think that these horses don't win these races, these turf sprints, is they they mostly run straight, right in their in their sprints. Um, this horse does have experience around turns, um, so I do like him as as a horse that can close in for second. Uh, my other, uh, I have two other picks for an exact. I have the two Motorious, who loves Del Mar. He should be coming flying late as well. And then, of course, my six-star mystery, who I probably have picked in every podcast I think that we've done that this horse has run. Um, I just can't pick him to win here, but um, 
I do think that he is the most likely winner if something goes goes wrong with Cogburn, um, the six. I will not use him in my pick five. I may mess around and use and use. I'm saying him. Is it a him or her? I'm not even sure, but I may mess around and use this horse. Uh, it's a her, right? I may mess around. And use I, I, I moved on five minutes ago, so I'm not sure what. I don't have the PPs in front of me. Right. Um, but again, like if we're talking pick five here, which we are, the nine Cogburn is a single. All right, and uh, I I echo the sentiments on the one. The one would be in uh, trifecta in the second and third slots for me as well. Uh, all right, on to race six. The uh, I haven't been getting out the post time, so let me just uh, go back. So that the the first uh, post I believe is three Eastern time for race yeah, yeah. four. Po- uh, race five is going to be three forty one mm-hmm. Eastern time. Race six will go off at four thirty one. Yeah. I'm sorry, four twenty one yeah. Eastern time. That is the Longines Breeders Cup, the Distaff Grade One, the potentially the biggest favorite uh, of this day. Maybe not overall because we had a horse that won at what two to three five, to five. three to five today, um, and that is Torpedo Anna. So I'll go first here. It's my turn. This is one of those, you know. I think it's a spread or you single and you have to figure out where you land on Torpedo Anna because she ran her eyeballs out in the Travers and did not look like the same horse in the Cotillion. And she, after the fact, uh, McPeak was saying, you know, he never cranked and this and that. And now she wasn't all out in the Cotillion either. I don't think Hernandez took the stick out on her. As I recall, we were watching that on the train from New York, I think Jason and I, but, um, it was not impressive. So, you know, did that race take a lot out of her? Sort of like how that that Woodward just kind of Rachel Alexander was never the same horse after that Woodward. Um, and she was probably the best horse in that Travers race. And J- Johnny V outrode Hernandez to win that race. I did land on her, uh, you know, and I'm not enthusiastic about it, but they're just I don't think there's another horse in here. If 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 uh, if Idiomatic had been in here, she would have probably been my choice. Uh, and that would have been a nice matchup, but she retired. I don't think there's another horse in here that can do it. The the horse some people will like, and I would probably use this on a B, although I won't give it out. Take it using the horse is the nine. Awesome result coming over from Japan. Not a good day today for the Japan contingent, but the Alders will run tomorrow. She has moved forward in every race on the sheets, and a move forward would be better than anything Anna has run to this point. And I do think that 111 in the Travers is gussied up a little bit. Um because it doesn't match up on the sheets, but there's just no other horse in here that is that good unless the Japanese horse is as advertised, and I'm not going to use her in the ticket we give out here. So I will begrudgingly uh, stay with Anna as a uh, single here, despite the fact that McPeak has never won a Breeders' Cup race. So we'll see if it changes. Jason. Yeah, I really want to try to beat Torpedo Anna here. Um, Six races this year, and including those last two races were – you know, definitely the Travers was was a grueling race. You know, she had a kind of fight in the Pennsylvania Derby too. So that that you know that was a tough race on her too. I'm going to defensively use her, um, but my top pick's going to be the nine. Awesome result. She's undefeated, so we really don't know. You know, we don't know what she's running against, but she, we don't also don't know how good she might be. Um, I love her thoroughgraph pattern. If you if you guys look at that, like she's incrementally improving, like by one point each race. Which, you know, I think these Japanese trainers, you know, are, are pretty precise in their training. So it wouldn't surprise me if she jumps up again off of that. But it's it's kind of, I mean, if you look, she went from a a seven to five to four to three to two to one. To me, it seems like she's going to improve off of that. Now. Um, if she does improve off of it, I think she wins the race. But I can't totally throw Torpedo Anna out of this race. So I'm going to go too deep, two chalks, two and nine, and I think that gets me through this race. I'm not impressed with anybody else in this race. Jimmy D, very interesting, off. guys. Um, I'm, I'm going to, you know, be an insomnia in this race, and I'm going to be sacrilegious, and and my friends are going to say he's crazy. I don't think Tharpedo Anna is going to win this race. Um, I had the good fortune of seeing Tharpedo Anna run 
personally in the last five of her races since the Kentucky Oaks. And I personally believe um, that in each of, of those races, and I, and I don't care what the buyer says, that's irrelevant to me um, at this point in time because I've seen this personally. I think she has declined in each one of her races. I don't think she's gotten better. You know, Phillies and mares are funny. They get tired, they stop running, period. End the conversation. Yeah. Sometimes it's young, sometimes yeah. it's a little older. You've seen it with older horses, um, uh, many of, of, of the Rachel-type horses that were just great until they hit a certain age, and that was it. Uh, Tharpedo is only the three-year-old filly. Um, the, the future is all about her. I have a friend who's got a part ownership in this horse, and he thinks this horse is the greatest horse that ever lived. I don't agree, and I don't think Kenny McPeak's going to win his first Breeders' Cup race. He hasn't won one. I don't think it will be on Saturday. This horse, I think, is declining. Uh, I, I, I think the horse that I'm going to give you is, is a horse that's just a hard hitter, picks up a jock that's going to make all the difference in the race because I think this horse was entered with Tarpita Anna many times and was given up in that race. Uh, could have been a lot more competitive in the race if it would have been ridden a little bit more efficiently. I like Candied. I like the one horse with Irod Ortiz. Um, you know, the legend will grow when I beat our, our, you know, Torpedo Anna in this race. Again, since that Kentucky Derby, that horse has continued to run. It won. Uh, the Travers race is a, is a race that I've commented to some of my friends that everyone saw that race as Tarpedo Anna losing by just a jump or two. And I understand why. She made a wonderful run. Um, coming from a little boxed-in position, uh, Hernandez set her fourth and lost by a stride to Fierceness, who everyone knows I like that horse. Um, I don't see it that way. I see Fierceness as grinding down. I see him as closing up at that time. Tarpedo Anna was just coming near him because of the fact that uh, I think at that point in time, Fierceness and, and its rider knew that the, the race was over. I just see this that, that Torpedo Anna is on a decline. I think Candy can beat this horse. I don't think the horse is going to run out of the money, so I would put her in the money. But I'm going to give you the one horse to win this, this staff. All right. So three different opinions to a different extent. Um, and just to throw one more tip it in jason mentioned the intent of the japanese trainers that four is coming over after running exclusively on turf i'm not going to pick her to win but she'll be in the trifecta no matter who you like on top she's well she, one. So apparently she's like a, a speed ball so she if she's probably going to try and get the lead she could go and hang on for third or fourth in the try yeah. or super maybe but uh she's not coming over she's not coming i mean you know turf all along it's, it's not an entry with another horse so yeah, that's just an that's an interesting take there. So I'll give that a little bit of thought uh, playing a, a vertical wager in race. All right. Uh, on to race seven, the Longines Breeders Cup Turf grade one on the well, they're all grade one. So it goes out saying, uh, but it's on the a mile and a half on the turf. This is three turns at Del Mar. Uh, post time is five oh one. We have a horse that won this race two years ago in uh rebels romance went off for him didn't even run the breeders cup last year now he's back but i think this could be interesting so we'll see where we go jason you can kick it off yeah to me this is an impossible race um i mean <laughs> the only thing i'll say is i think it's a euro japan race um you know i i, I tossed all the american horses i don't like any of them I, I i just don't think any of these horses are strong and I wanted to be against 11 Rebels Romance, but I, I have to use him. I mean, he's in form. Obviously loves the distance. I think he's 9 for 12. Um, he's my top pick. Um, but, of course, I have to use the Japanese horses because I usually use Japanese horses. The three, Shahir, I think you pronounce it, who probably really, if you watch the replay, I did, did watch a lot of replays of, on Horse Racing Nation. Um, and I watched this one probably should have won this race last year. Just got a kind of not a great ride from the jock, um, which let August Rodin win. So I'm going to use the three. 
I'm going to use the five JRB. I'm going to use the four Luxembourg. I'm going to use the one Russian Park. And then I got to throw this Emily up, John, the two in. You guys know I'm not a Detori fan anymore, but it's just weird that they, that it was at Gosden, right? Gosden threw her in this race when he really could have easily threw in a Philly and Mare Turf and won that race because I don't think that race is that strong either. Um, I watched her replays and I didn't like, I didn't really like her turn of foot in the replays, but just something about trainer and ten on this one that I, you know, and I'm, I'm spreading so much that I'm going to throw her in. So I got one, two, three, four, five, and 11. I'm using here. All right. Jimmy D. And as I said, in that sprint that the Europeans don't win, <laughs> the smile and a half, they do win. Um, this is not a European horse I'm going for. I also like that Shahara, uh, if I am not yeah. butchering that pronunciation uh, of the Japanese horse. That's the number three horse with the Muro running on him. Mm. He just seems to come up with some super races, especially in that Dubai Shaheem Classic. Um, he, he comes out of nowhere. It's just he, He's always close at the end. I, it's hard to know a lot about these foreign horses when they come over here and you're looking at, you know, modest form. You, you I, I'm not seeing a lot and I'm not looking at all his past performances. So in, in, the, in the limited information I get from the charts, it looks to me that this, this horse certainly, you know, mile and a half is his distance. Um, and, and, this, and, and these foreign horses in these distance seem to eat this up. They're just they're just wonderful turf horses. Um, it's not an American suit. Uh, I like the three horse. I'm not going to spread in this race. It's a difficult, difficult race, as was mentioned, as and as the Broad Street Hustle likes to say, aforementionedly hustled. Uh, uh, see, see, we should say that aforementionedly hustled, make it our word. But on, on the other hand, um, I like the three. I, I like the Japanese horse with with the Muro. All right, so uh, I am spreading uh, in this race, and uh, I'm actually going six deep here. And three are kind of take your pick is who you want to make the top pick, and then the other three are kind of like maybe could win. So uh, just to be different, I'll call Farbridge my top pick. And again, not really impressive this year with the Americans, but he's improved a little bit each race, and, and these aren't the heavy hitters coming over from from Europe either. So he might get lost in the betting. I'll I'll make him my top pick, but on that top line of 3 uh Rebels Romance obviously and the 3 uh Shariar uh will go with, I guess. Um that would be my my 3 on the on the my 3 A's if you wanted to do it that way. Um as far as the remainder Emily Upjohn, um I have a ton of respect for Godson if he's going to bring him over bring her over in this case uh worth a look luxembourg o'brien the four and then um the other o'brien the 10 wingspan um and if you look at the and again you know listen to any buyer this morning and he admitted like the buyers on turf are pretty much worthless. Are, but they i think really the thoroughgraphs can give you the thoroughgraphs will give you a little bit of information especially if you're looking at form so if you look at the thoroughgraphs on this wingspan she's a three-year-old filly so a lot against her Six races only, but uh, she ran 12 and 11 and then jumped up to pair sevens and then ran a 5-4. So pattern-wise, it looked like she could make another jump to a maybe a two or a one, and that could well be enough to win this race. So I'll have her in the mix. Um, but 2, 3, 4, 6, 10, 11 will be on my final ticket coming out of the turf. And that takes us to the uh, main event for our purposes, race eight, the Longines, which sponsors, I guess, every other race on this card, Breeders' Cup Classic, a mile and a quarter on the dirt. Uh, post time is 541. Um, yeah, it, the betting is going to be all over the place. And I, I have some insights into the current odds that I'll I'll share in a moment. Um after we're done picking, because I don't want to influence anybody's picks, but um, it could be all over the place, and but there might be a standout from somebody's mind. But uh, Jimmy D, your love for fierceness is <laughs> well documented. Me? 
we're gonna we're, we're, we're gonna start with you because if you don't if you don't use fierceness, <laughs> I'm taking them off my ticket now. But uh, uh, you can my, kick my, us my off. boy, my, my boy, my boy has gotten to know me a little bit. Yeah, uh, come on. Come on, what what is not to love about this horse? I left you guys picking this horse in the Travers. Little did I know I was yep. going to make everybody rich in the Travers because all those thousand dollar betters that that got this horse at three ninety three ninety to one, and he was six ninety to one with three minutes to post. I almost didn't yeah, get the like horse because one. of that. Yeah. I thought he was lame or something. Mm -hmm. um, and, and they bet him down a little bit. But still, 390 to 1, you're getting yourself, you know, what, what is that, 7 and change? That's that's crazy on fierceness. That's the best 3-year-old in this country. Now, there's the question in this country. Is he the best 3-year-old in the world? Uh, I don't know. I, 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 I really don't know. But I was taught at a very young age that you don't necessarily have to take the same girl to every dance. But if you take her to the dance, you got to dance with her. I like fierceness in this race. I, I think the layoff will be key to this horse. When I like this horse in the Travers, my concern was it had run in, in, in the gym dandy. It was only three and a half weeks earlier than that. I didn't like it. Uh, this horse seems to like a respite period. Um, he still won that race. And as I, I, I alluded to earlier, I didn't think Torpedo Anna, and I am in the in the minority with this. I understand that. But again, I was there, which makes America great. And we'll know that on Tuesday also, which makes America great is it's a land of diversity and different opinions. And, and, I, and I'd like to say this. For our political friends, we always have much more in common than we have against each other. So regardless of who wins on any given day, we're still Americans. So let's stand up together. Fierceness is the best three-year-old in this country. He's got his layoff, working out great. Um, Rapoli talked about him a little bit with glaring, glaring terms. Um, I just think this horse is a monster. I hope to God they bring him back as a four-year-old next year because he's gun runnerish. He's going to be fabulous as a four-year-old next year. I know this particular race has many, many great horses. Uh, you can make a case for Forever Young, of course. You can make for a case for City of Troy, who's supposedly the best horse in the world at this point in time. And you certainly can make a case for Sierra Leone, who is the greatest bridesmaid that I've ever seen in my life. But they find a way to lose. I'm looking at a horse that finds a way to win. Uh, Fiercest should have never won that race in the Travers, and he did. I think the horse is getting better at all times. If I was going to have a best bet and to have a best bet in the, in the Breeders' Cup race, you have to be a lunatic. And, and 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 as you know, as the song says, that's just may who you be looking for, a lunatic. Fierceness. He wins by five, coasts down the lane, proves the best in the world. I'm, I'm sorry, I take my hand off my heart after <laughs> that. Uh a thrilling rendition, but you're absolutely right. The, the wonderful thing about this country is that you can have differences of opinion and still get along. Uh, and the other great thing is you're entitled to your opinion, but it can be dead wrong. And that is the case in this race with your opinion on the nine, whether it's how he ran uh, in the Travers, where if he keeps a straight line, he loses because Thorpita Anna goes by. Johnny V turned around, saw the horse coming, edged him over. Anna had to break stride a little bit, shift gears, and that's what cost her the race. But a fine race from Fierceness. Anyway, he's not winning uh, tomorrow. Um whether it's the best three-year-old in the world or not, the best three-year-old running in the race tomorrow will be the horse that really says you more than anything else, and that's Forever Young, the one. Um, was my derby horse, should have won the derby. Uh, if anything, I'm stubborn and came back. They pointed to this <laughs> from the derby one last time out. As shown, they can shift, uh, ship. Um, and again, it has, wasn't a good day today for the for the Japanese contingent, but they usually don't send their two-year-olds over. So it's a first time for that. Um, 
I've been waiting for this horse to run again in the States, and it is my top pick uh, in the race. Um, I am not on City of Troy at all. To me, this is a strictly, this is a breeder's decision. Coolmore is a breeder outfit. If he ran in the turf, he'd be the heavy favorite, but it wouldn't give him a dollar more at stud fee. So this is them taking a shot to get a dirt horse and you know, also have the justification to increase justify stud fee if he were to win this race. Uh, I am totally against City of Troy. Um, I'll just go quickly. I do have Sierra Leone in the mix, and he's he's the bridesmaid, but he he improved in that last race, so eh, maybe. Uh, he'll be a better price, or so I thought, as we'll find out. Uh, but I also have Ushba Tesoro, uh, who had a little bit of trouble last year in this race, but he ran some bang-up numbers on the sheets. And there's a horse that I really had no intention to use until I looked at the numbers and I listened to people. I'm going to use next, and I feel like an idiot doing it. But the horse just runs his race, and this is shorter and much better competition. And I'm not a speed finger. I'm not beholden to speed fingers, but whether it's buyers or thoroughgraphs, especially the thoroughgraphs, they, they're, they're, they, they're accurate more than they're not, and he's got the best thoroughgraphs. And I have to use him in the mix. And I am I'm, as of now, I, I do not have fierceness in that. So 1, 2, 7, 11, 14 for me. Jason. I'm very close to you, Chalky. Um, my main idea here is I, I'm trying to beat City of Troy in fierceness. Um, I, I get what you're saying, Jimmy D. Um, he could be a freak and could prove me wrong. I've bet against him the last two races. I've been wrong. Trying to beat him again. Probably be wrong again. But my top pick is going to be the one forever young. You know, I, I, much like Chalky said, I, I think he, he wins the Derby if he doesn't get interfered with by Sierra Leone. Um, they pointed him here. His thoroughbreds looks like, you know, he's got four straight ones. Um, you know, some will look at that and say, oh, well, he's going to run another one again. But, I you know, with a three-year-old, I think he can make a jump off of that. Um, and, you know, I'm hoping he does. Um, he'll be my top pick. I'm going to use three other horses. Um uh, I'm also using the 12 Arthur's ride. I, I, I just think that um, it's possible he gets loose from the speed favoring track and just keeps going. Maybe, you know, if fierceness, maybe they don't want to, they don't want to go with, with him or, you know, I don't really know who else would go with him other than fierceness. Um, I could be wrong. I could be missing somebody, but he gets out of the gate and gets over. He could keep going. So I'm using the 12 Arthur's ride. I'm also going to use the seven, Ushba Tesoro. Um, he was seven to two last year. He's going to be 12 to one this year. He's been in form. Got a really good thorough pattern. I, I think he could win the race, and I think you'll get a really good price on him, 12 to 15 to one. And, you know, I'm probably going to surprise you guys, although Chalky brought the name up, but I just think there's a chance that 11 Sierra Leone finally gets up in the stretch. Maybe he doesn't. Um, I think he's not going to be as far back. He wasn't that far back in the last race. You know, Pratt, I like Pratt, as you guys know. He's going to be a price. He's going to be 12 to 1. I'm going to give him one more chance. So, in order, I like the 1, the 12, the 7, and the 11. So, I just realized that I gave out a number for a horse that I didn't even talk about, but I did like. So, I was against Arthur's Ride because I was taking Highland Falls at 20 to 1. Uh, in the mix who beat Arthur's ride in the jockey club gold cup. Um, Arthur's ride had an easy lead in, in the, the uh, was it the Whitney and yeah. got pressed a little bit in the cold club and, and Highland falls went by. I don't, I'm not in love with Highland falls, but if it's anywhere near 20 to one and, you know, beat, beat Arthur's ride at a mile and a quarter. So I neglected to, um, to mention that I was so fired up about picking the Japanese horse, despite the fact that my grandfather fought at Guadalcanal. Uh, hopefully he doesn't hold it against me in the afterlife. Um, anyway, so before we get, before we get into the, uh, our, our tickets, uh, let me give you the real time odds. Again, these are early, but I don't think these are just on track. Like you see in the Derby. So here are the odds for the classic as it stands right or as of an hour ago, uh, your betting favorite is, Unfortunately, Forever Young at five to two. Yeah. Uh, City of Troy is up at seven to one. 
fierceness is five to one, which if you were to actually go off at five or six to one, I'd be a lot more inclined to use him. Uh, mm. I thought I was playing against the favorite by not using him here. Um, your second choice is Sierra Leone at seven to two. Oh, that's bad. Now, if that's the case, then I that, I, I like that. I, I at, if he was going to be twelve to one, that was part of my logic. So at seven right. to two, again, we'll have to see what goes through the day and, and our pick five at the beginning before we see the final odds. But um, and those were any other things are all over the board a little bit. Highland Falls is fifteen to one, which uh, you know I would still be okay with. City of Troy at seven to one still does nothing for me. But those are the big. Those are the horses we've kind of talked about. And and next is. Sitting at twelve to one as opposed to eight to one on the morning line. Chalk, that's the, chalk, man. That's man, the horses that we've seen much talking about. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, and this is just an off the off off the cuff comment. I know I like fierceness, and and I know he's an erratic horse. I know he's crazy. Think about this, and Jim, I know you're a value guy, and Jace, you too. If you could get fierceness. And I know I like the horse, and I whether he wins or not, it's you know we joke around about stuff, and which is always nice. But five to one on fierceness, you guys are gamblers. Come on, you gotta blink. That you know, changes, Muck, Jim. I know it. That changes. You that changes the dynamic blink. completely for me. Because I'm thinking he's the favorite at two to one, maybe five to right. two when I'm playing against him. If he's five yeah. to one, third choice. I, I play I play that differently. And yeah. look, those and are just the win odds. Point. When I look at when looking at the double payouts um, in that pool for the it was the juvenile classic double is another way to kind of predict the odds. Depending on which horse you were looking at, it was either him or Forever Young. So they might be very close when it comes to post time as far as the, the win odds. But uh, Forever Young is going to be no worse than second. It certainly seems. Um yeah. Which maybe is not surprised because I've heard a lot of other quote unquote experts picking him in the mix. Um, City of Troy is going to be interesting only because the I did hear somebody say he is the most pre bet horse internationally in Breeders' Cup really? history. That's forty one years now, the most pre bet horse internationally. So it's not going in this pool. So uh, the thought was. You're not going to have win value on him potentially if any of that money actually translates to the on day pool on track pool or commingling, but there will be value in multis because the British aren't going to play him in multis or the European might not play him in pick threes or pick fours or whatever. Right now, it's not in the win pool, but it's still very early to say the least. But that was just one other tidbit I mm -hmm. found interesting. All right. We're going long, but that's not a problem because this is one of our favorite shows of the year, and it's very important that everybody gets a chance to cash in on Breeders' Cup Day 2. Uh, so let's go around. I think everybody will have a ticket. Jason, we'll start with you. What's your play for the pick five or anything else you want to cover? Yeah, I'm going to do a 50-cent ticket. So race four, four, and nine. Race five, single to nine. Race six, two and nine. Race seven, one, two, three, four, five, eleven. Race eight, one, seven, eleven, twelve for fifty cents. That's forty eight dollars. All right, Jimmy D. I do, do you Jim, have anything? And, and, and uh, before I give it to you, I just want to say this. I want to clarify one thing for my my, my many racing friends. The call of the ninety five Breeders' Cup Classic. Does everyone agree with Tom Durkin said? This has been a very controversial thing to many horse players. I, I think Jimmy would know this because we've we've argued the point it's, many it's, times. It's, it's, Jay, I'm not sure you know about 95, it. 95, no, 95, is, 95 is cigar, it's but cigar. I don't call. And it was Tom Durkin. And it might have been one of the classic calls. And and a shout out to my friend Chris Boyle, who does this call impeccably. But it was three words he used. And the words got a little scrambled, but it was unconquerable, unbeatable, invincible cigar. Let's clear that up for the multitude of people that are misinformed. It wasn't incomparable. It was unconquerable, unbeatable, invincible cigar. Greatest call of all time. Let's get it right, America. Listen, 
Uh, well, I'll dis I'll disagree. I'll disagree. Not because I think that was wrong. Anything that Durkin said, but you got to go forward six years. The classic is at Belmont Park weeks after 9-11 and Tisnow digs it out, beats the arc winner Saki at the line and Tisnow wins it for America right after 9-11. I, I can't, I can't put cigar. No, I'm not saying he's put above. That, I'm that just trying to classify the call. I'm saying, I think, I think for the call, for the call, for the, you want to talk about America. I mean, that was, we, you know, the, the American horse dug down and, and beat the international invader in the shadows of the trade centers weeks after the, the largest tragedy in American history. So I, I, I will put that one on the cut above anything else, but uh, a very that's, memorable that, and that's appropriate fine. call for, from for the sake of Jenkins. apples. Um, well, I, I, let me just say, I'll save this call for Tuesday night. I don't think anything is getting called Tuesday night, well, uh, or mid just, midnight never, Eastern time, at least. Yeah. But anyway, um, Jimbo, I think I, I, anyway, I think what I'd like to do, I, I, in, I do, in, I do, in, I do. In, in, in the um, that pick five, first leg, I'd like a four six nine with a nine one twelve. I, I, I'm going to stretch every one of these races because they're difficult races. With the one two four and the sixth. The three, two, four. It's a three, 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 three. And I'm going to single fierceness at the end. Um, not a very, very costly bet, but a very difficult bet. All yours. All right. Uh, so uh, I'll go cheap here, which cost me today, and I probably won't play it this way tomorrow. But nonetheless, 50 cent pick five. Uh, four, six, seven, ten in race four. Single the nine Cogburn in race five. Single the two Thorpeda Anna in race six. Although, in all fairness, I will play the Japanese horse in another bet or another pick five, but not here. Uh, for the Breeders' Cup turf, we're going to go two, three, four, six, ten, eleven. Uh, and then in the classic, we'll go one, two, seven, eleven, fourteen. And I do reserve the right that if Fierce Nix looks like he's going to be a longer price than Sierra Leone, I will swap that out. But anyway, uh, not adding horses, just changing it out. It'll be that's a sixty dollar bet for fifty cents. All right. Anything else anybody wants to cover? Bring up before we wrap it up for the yeah, day. Thank you. It's always a pleasure to be here. All right. Thank you, as always, to the legend Jimmy D for gracing us with his presence on a Friday evening. Nonetheless, uh, we'll be back next week. We'll uh, we got, a, you know, no specific shows coming up, but we'll have midpoint of the NFL season. We'll have MLB free agency coming up uh, and hopefully the Sixers will get their stars on the court sooner rather than later. So a few things to talk about. Uh, but this has been episode 131 of Broad Street Hustle. Have a good weekend and good Breeders' Cup luck.